for module six, we'll be talking about biodiversity and ecosystems management. To start our discussion, let's define what is biodiversity and ecosystem. Biological diversity or biodiversity means the variability among living organisms from all sources, including terrestrial, marine, and other aquatic ecosystems and ecological complexes of which they are a part. This includes diversity within species, between species, and of ecosystems. Meanwhile, ecosystems are complex sets of relationships between living resources, habitats, and human communities. Biodiversity conservation is an important aspect of environmental management, as biodiversity represents a country's natural heritage and provides important natural resources and ecosystem services. Biodiversity is human's life support system. The quality of the air, the food, and the water that human uses depends on it. Ecosystem services are the benefits that human obtain from the ecosystem. This can be classified into four. One, provisioning services. Two, regulating services. Three, cultural services. And lastly, supporting services. Provisioning services are products directly obtained from the ecosystems. Examples are food, fresh water, fuel wood, fiber, biochemicals, genetic resources. Regulating services are benefits obtained from the regulation of ecosystem processes such as climate regulation, disease regulation, water regulation, water purification, and pollination. Cultural services are non-material benefits obtained from the ecosystems such as spiritual and religious, recreation and ecotourism, aesthetic, inspirational, educational, sense of place, and cultural heritage. Supporting services are services necessary for the production of, all other, of other services. These include soil formation, nutrient cycling, and primary production. Biodiversity and ecosystem services sustain the development and development impacts biodiversity and ecosystem services. Both human well-being and long-term economic success depend on these services. At least 40% of the world's economy and 80% of the needs of the poor are derived from biological resources. Let's now talk about the biodiversity in the Philippines. Philippines is a treasure trove of biodiversity. It is one of the 17 megadiverse countries that host 70 to 80% of the world's biodiversity. The country's terrestrial ecosystems are home to many of the best and rarest wildlife species. It has more than 52,177 described species, half of which are endemic or found nowhere else on earth. The country has more than 16,200 species of wild flora or plants, which makes it among the top ranking countries in the world in terms of the number of plant species. It is also recognized as one of the most important centers of animal or faunal diversity, having an estimated total of 1,261 species, around 618 of which are endemic. Some centers of biodiversity in the country have received international designation as protected area. They are classified as ASEAN heritage parks, such as Tupadaha Reef Natural Park, Agusan Marsh Wildlife Sanctuary, Nahon Lake National Park, Turtle Islands Wildlife Sanctuary, Mount Apo Natural Park, Mount Makiling Nature Reserve, Mount Hamigitan Range Wildlife Sanctuary, Mount Iglit Baco National Park, Mount Malindang Range Natural Park, Mount Kitanglad Range Natural Park, Timpong and Hibok Hibok Natural Monument. However, uh, any sudden change in the environment caused by human activities can affect biological diversity and may eventually destroy it. Changes in global area sea temperature by one or two degrees can dramatically affect the species habitats, with some becoming uninhabitable to some species. This table shows you the biodiversity summary status in the country. So this table shows you the number of species of fauna and flora, the number of endemic species, as well as the number of threatened species.
The drivers of biodiversity loss include habitat loss and degradation. Meanwhile, habitat loss is due to overexploitation and unsustainable use, the presence of invasive alien species, various pollution, climate change, and even human activities. These are the activities or causes affecting our biodiversity and habitat. So for forests and mountain ecosystems, legal and illegal logging and sustainable agricultural practices such as slash and burn or kainin, forest fire and mining can contribute to biodiversity and habitat loss. For agroecological systems or agricultural ecosystems, land use change such as the conversion of agricultural lands to residential, pollution to the use of chemicals, introduction of monoculture and agricultural practices incompatible with conservation of agricultural biodiversity can also affect the agroecosystems. Meanwhile, for inland waters, causes of biodiversity and habitat loss include diversion of rivers for irrigation and construction of dams for hydropower, migratory fish species and invasive alien species can contribute to the biodiversity and habitat loss in inland waters such as lakes and ponds. For karst and cave ecosystems, the increased demand for recreational sites, vandalism, treasure, hunting, mining, pollution, illegal collection of cave resources, deforestation, and rapid urbanization of adjacent areas contribute to their biodiversity and habitat loss. For urban ecosystem, the increasing population and the development of urban areas reduce the number of biodiversity in the area. Lastly, for coastal and marine ecosystems, the biodiversity and habitat loss include the following uh, causes, coastal development, marine-based pollution, sedimentation, overfishing, and destructive fishing. Biodiversity is an international concern and several multilateral agreements forged are relevant to the conservation needs of the country. So Philippines signed and ratified several international commitments and multilateral environmental agreements. These are the international commitments of the Philippines. One, the Ramsar Convention on Wetlands, the Convention on Biological Diversity, the Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety to the Convention on Biological Diversity, Convention on the Conservation of Migratory Species, Conservation on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora, and lastly, the World Heritage Convention. These international commitments and multilateral agreements highly influence the local laws, policies, and systems for ecosystems and biodiversity management in the country. So one um, local law that we have is the RA7586 or the NIPAS Act. NIPAS stands for National Integrated Protected Area System. So this law provides the legal framework for the establishment and management of the protected areas in the Philippines as a means of conserving biodiversity. The law defines protected areas as identified portions of land and or water set aside by reason of their unique physical and biological significance. So the NIPAS Act categorized selected areas, such uh, protected areas, such as strict nature reserve, national park, natural monument, wildlife sanctuary, protected landscapes and seascapes, resource reserves, natural biotic areas. Another national policy on environmental um, law, or another is the RA9147, or the Wildlife Resources Conservation and Protection Act. The overall goal of the law is to conserve and protect wildlife species and their habitats in order to promote ecological balance and enhance biological diversity. The following provisions of the law stated as objectives may be considered as the major strategies to attain the said goal. So one is to regulate the collection and trade of wildlife. Two, to pursue with due regard to the national interest, the Philippine commitment to international convention on the protection of wildlife and their habitats 
and lastly, to initiate or support scientific studies on the conservation of biological diversity. So these are the key provisions of RA 9147. For the conservation and protection of wildlife resources through regulations on the following. Collection and possession of wildlife and byproducts derivatives, local transport of wildlife byproducts and derivatives, exportation and or importation of wildlife introduction, reintroduction or restocking of endemic indigenous wildlife, introduction of exotic wildlife bioprospecting and biosafety scientific researches on wildlife, commercial breeding or propagation of wildlife resources, collection of economically important wildlife species, collection of threatened wildlife byproducts and derivatives. Second, for protection and registration of threatened species through the following, determination of threatened species based on scientific data and with due regard to international accepted criteria, conservation, breeding or propagation of threatened species, designation of critical habitats outside protected areas and where threatened species are found and lastly, prescribing illegal acts and corresponding fines and penalties. Another law is the RA 9072 or the National Caves and Caves Resource, Resources Management and Protection Act. RA 9027 or 727 declared the policy of the state to conserve, protect and manage caves and cave resources as part of the country's natural wealth. Among the key provision of the act is for the DNR to coordinate with the Department of Tourism, the National Museum, the National Historical Institute, concerned LGUs, the scientific community, and the academe in assessing the cave's archaeological, cultural, and historical value in addition to its ecological and scientific value. These are the prohibited acts as stated in RA 9072. One, knowingly destroying, disturbing, defacing, marrying, altering, removing or harming the spillogen or formations within caves that are created by the removal of bedrock rather than as secondary deposits or speleothem, a secondary mineral deposit form in the limestone or dolostone solutional caves of any cave or altering the free movement of any animal or plant life into or out of any cave. Gathering or Collecting, possessing, consuming, sell selling, bartering, or exchanging, or offering for sale without authority any cave resource. Another is the Executive Order 533 on the Integrated Coastal Management or ICM. EO 533 adopts the ICM as a national strategy for the sustainable development of the country's coastal and marine environment and resources. The strategy aims to promote food security, sustainable livelihood, poverty alleviation, and reduction of vulnerability to natural hazards while conserving ecological integrity. So these are the best practices in integrated coastal management that need to be applied in coastal areas. One, coastal and marine use, zonation as a management tool, sustainable fisheries and conservation of living resources, protection and rehabilitation of coral reefs, mangroves, seagrass, estuaries, and other habitats, particularly through implementation of marine protected areas, nature reserves and sanctuaries, development of upland, watershed, catchment areas, and basin wild management, management approaches, integrated waste management, including sewage and solid, hazardous, toxic, and other waste by major sources, integrated management of port safety, health, security, and environmental protection, and lastly, involvement of the private sector or business sector as a partner in integrated coastal management. In terms of the implementation of biodiversity conservation in the country, the strategy is to identify targets and to implement an action plan incorporating these targets. This can be done through the following partnerships within, between and among the national and local governments, civil society organizations, academic and research institutions, and the private sector, particularly in conservation programs for rivers and forests, which incorporate provisions of economic and livelihood benefits in project design, coordination, communication, and resource sharing among various actors, 
as well as other stakeholders for consideration of traditional knowledge and the role of indigenous peoples and local communities in the development of biodiversity friendly businesses and conserving critical habitats and protected areas and lastly, incorporating biodiversity conservation and sustainable use in local land use plans. This is how the implementation of biodiversity conservation takes place in the country. One, mainstreaming biodiversity conservation in national and subnational policies, programs, and plans. It means biodiversity conservation must be included in the Philippine Development Plan, local land use, and development plans. Another is the through economic and fiscal incentives for biodiversity conservation. Examples, integrated protected area fund and innovative financing mechanisms. Next, we have sector policies and programs. So each sector must have their own plan, such as the National Cave Action Plan, National Ecotourism Strategy and Action Plan, National Wetland Action Plan. Of course, governance is at most importance through the participation of the different stakeholders. And lastly, enforcing environmental justice through the writ of Kalikasan. In terms of research and biodiversity monitoring, the Ecosystems Research and Development Bureau of the DNR is established as the principal research and development unit focused on major ecosystems in the country. So, a biodiversity monitoring system has already been established for more than a decade now, and it focuses on identifying trends in biodiversity and its use so as to guide actions for protected area management. But the challenge now is to how to make this biodiversity monitoring system sustainable. So for this chapter, we have discussed the following. Biodiversity means the variability among living organisms from all sources, including terrestrial, marine, and other aquatic ecosystems and ecological complexes of which they are part. Ecosystems are complex sets of relationships between living resources, habitats, and human communities. And we've also learned that the Philippines is a biodiversity hotspot with high rate of endemism. Biodiversity and ecosystems are threatened by various human activities. Now the local laws and policies and systems for ecosystems and biodiversity management are highly influenced by multilateral agreements and international commitments in which the Philippines participated. Now the key strategy for conservation of biodiversity is to identify targets and to implement an action plan incorporating these targets. So that ends our module six, biodiversity and ecosystems management.